feel like this title screen is gonna haunt my nightmares. Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand One Games. I'm your host, Gaming Jay, and today we're hopping into the PlayStation 2 tactical RPG classic known as Disgae 2 Disga Disgae? I, I don't even know how to say this. I don't even know how to pronounce this. There you go. It's on the screen there. You can read it for yourselves. Pronunciation is up in the air. It's a uh, personal opinion, I think. Um, this is Disgay 2 colon Cursed Memories. We got this awesome Japanese anime intro here. So I believe the backstory for this game is some kind of weird demon named um, Xenon appeared and he cursed all humans and turned them into demons. So we're going to go be going around trying to uh, turn people back into humans. I don't understand at all what's happening. There's penguins. The oh, she just threw a knife in the face of a penguin. Oh, dear God. There were apples before, and there's crossbows and handguns. Oh, she's, like, sticking a bunch of butterfly people with crossbows. Oh, he's throwing just laser balls at the earth. Oh, my God. What is happening? This uh, this intro is just all over the place. Um, I don't understand it. She's wearing very scantily clad clothing. Um, but, uh, you know, whatever. Teach their own. Um, so, before this game starts off, I'll tell you a little bit about it. It's a tactical RPG, kind of like Tactics Ogre, if you remember that game. Or it's also kind of like Pools of Radiance, if you remember when I played that. So what a tactical RPG is, is when you go into combat, you actually have units that can sort of move on a grid, and, you know, there's, like, environments around you, like hallways and stairs, and, uh, you know, like, stuff, chairs that get in the way, and you get to position your characters and fight. So it's not just like the Final Fantasy model where you're all lined up in a row taking turns fighting. You can actually move like chess pieces around. Um, and Pools of Radiance was like that. So was Tactics Ogre. Um, I never really mentioned the connection when I played Pools of Radiance that it was a tactical RPG, but it definitely was. Anyway, um, let's go ahead and start this game up. I have never played this before. I'm going in completely blind. I don't even know what the buttons are, so we're going to figure this one out together, guys. But isn't that the joy of my channel? You tune in every couple of days, and you don't know what I'm going to be playing. The um... Ooh, this is pretty cool. It looks like Nightmare Before Christmas. A um, little other bit of trivia for you. The Japanese title for this game is called Netherworld Battle Chronicle, colon, Disgaea 1 or 2, depending on which game you're playing. Um, I think the Netherworld, ba Netherworld Battle Chronicle is an awesome name for a game. I don't know why they changed it. I kind of feel like the North American title sucks, actually, but... Um, I guess they're telling us that uh, there was another world, bad stuff happened, and now the bad stuff's coming to us, and we're going to have to fight our way out of it. Which I am down. If that is my backstory, I, that's a story I can get behind. And here we are in Holt Village. Pretty cool, uh, pretty cool style, actually. It's sort of like... 2D sprites almost in a 3D world, so it's sort of mixing the anime with the polygons of the PS2. That's kind of cool. Are you really gonna go you through with this? this? You know, I can go and find Zen on myself. Yeah, man. Stay out of my way. Oh, yes, like when do. it comes to Zen. Oh God, you have an eye in your forehead. Do you know? You literally have three eyeballs. I mean, you probably know. Besides, You're also missing a nose. So. Uh, when I was, like, my guy on the right there, by the way, I cannot tell if he's male or female. Okay, does anyone else have this problem? I don't know, like, maybe I just don't watch enough anime, but sometimes I feel like the male anime characters kind of look like they have the bodies of females. They're just incredibly muscular, of course, but they have sort of the female physique. Like, in the opening video that I was watching this dude, I swear I thought he had breasts. I swear I thought it was a girl. But I guess he's not a chick. He's a man. A man who goes around defeating overlords. The music does not match the mood at all, by the way. We're talking about destroying, like, an evil overlord, and it's, like, pleasant, jovial background music. Oh, zany adventures are being had. So people just hopped out of a, a giant well in front of us. I don't know what they're doing. That guy seems to be a unicorn. What is happening? Yeah, Did we send them on some weird expedition to get honey? To sacrifice some life in order to summon Overlord Xenon. Besides, you're all demons. It's a year or two off your life. You'll probably spoil them anyway. What? We're 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 into human sacrifice. My God. 
Okay, I think I, I did read that uh, this might be his mother, uh, the main character's mother, and she's trying to summon Xenon, and uh, it's not going to work out. Spoilers. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Shut up, brat. Mommy still wants to be human again, so be a good little sacrifice now. All right, so... Oh, God. <laughs> she's like, shut up and get in the pot and die. So yes, uh, that is my mom. She was turned into a demon. It happens, guys. When evil overlords show up in your village, don't tell me that some of your loved ones have not been turned into demons, because you, sir, would be a liar, and we all know that. Um, I, I do, I do sort of get the sense from movies and TV shows that I've seen before that human sacrificial, human sacrificial packs with demons and Satan himself rarely work out uh, in the advantage of the person doing the sacrificing, which seems like a bogus deal. If you're going to go to all the trouble of sacrificing other humans, you would think that Satan would cut you a deal and be like, oh, well, you did me a solid. Thanks for summoning me. But no, you're usually the first person he kills. Um, same with any sort of random devil, random incarnation of evil or malice or hatred. So I, I feel like things are not going to go, go well for Mama here. But I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Um... She's now playing her ocarina, which is traditional demon summon summoning instruments. This is a traditional demon summoning ditty from uh, Old Ireland. It's an Irish demon summoning song. It's uh, got a bit of the uh, pagan influence, you can tell there. It's of darkness and light. In the name of Adele, I hereby summon Overlord Zenon to his side. Yes, yeah, think it end well. Um, what else is there to tell you about this game? Okay, so this game consists of 13 missions. Each mission always starts you in like a town or a hub, and from there you can kind of go on your side quests and side missions and go through maps and stuff. You can also apparently access maps from the previous game, which is kind of cool. Oh god. Oh god, what happened to everybody? Oh, that that is not cool though. Um, what went wrong? You tried to summon a demon and you sacrificed three of your friends. It's, it's not rocket science, lady. Uh, but you can't access missions from the previous uh, this gay game, I think. Um, and I was reading it. So it has, like, randomly generated levels or something like that. So I, I don't quite know. Again, I've never played this before. But it sounds like there's a lot of content in this game here. Oh. Hello. Who is this? We seem to have summoned a Femali. She floats down from the sky. Well, we didn't get Xenon, but I think we got a pretty good mate for my fellow here. Are, are arranged marriages a thing in the world of Disgay? She's... She was wearing her going out clothes. It's a good thing she was fully dressed if, when she got summoned. Imagine you were, like, lounging in your PJs and somebody summoned you through a sacrificial pact and you just showed up and you're like, Oh, man, like, can somebody get me some pants? Like, I was not expecting to be summoned from the afterlife today. Seriously. It was, it was lounge day. It's... Um, it is a girl, though. I like how there's just dead bodies in the background. She's cute for an overlord. She's overlord Zenon. Do you know my father? Oh, uh, we summoned the daughter. We were a little off in our sacrificial pact here. That I am, for I am Rosalind, the one and only daughter of Overlord Zenon. You want to go out sometime? Oh, you can't be serious. Oh, he's he's not impressed by that. Episode 1, The Overlord's Daughter. Traditional love tale, guys. So... so I guess our guy... Okay, daughter. I guess this guy didn't die. Oh, wait, is that my dad? Wait, the mom was sacrificing the dad? And the daughter? <laughs> we just, she was just willing to sacrifice the whole family. Wait, why didn't they die? I don't quite get it. Are they demons? Hey, you've got a point. Hey, toots. Plus, what is this guy wearing? Look at this. He's got, like, a giant red tie and, like... I, I don't even know how to describe that shirt. It's a, it's a paradox. Um... Rosalind is definitely dressed impressive. Why is she mad at us? She Her father turned us all into demons. Okay, let's... Let's jump ahead episode one where we Surely get to explore a world maybe buy some items fight 
That, those would be fun things to do. Um, I'm willing to believe, by the way, game. Game. I believe you. I believe backstory happened. Can we, can, can we continue on to the next point? <laughs> I think I have, I think I have like a congenital, um, lack of patience for unskippable cutscenes. I don't know, what do you guys think? Like, am, am I like crazy here? Am I just super impatient? Um, because I feel like sometimes you play these games, they give us like a lot of backstory. And I would just rather like jump into it. I think it's a symptom of modern games though. I don't know, like I don't remember too many like 8-bit games when I was a kid going like crazy on the backstory here. It's sort of like one of those things where, like, necessity breeds creativity. Like, back in the days of, like, when computers were really simple, you simply didn't have enough memory to store all these cutscenes, so you'd have to tell stories in more creative ways. And you did have many games that just didn't have a story, but the few that did really integrated story well into very limited technology. But now the developers can kind of do whatever they want. Oh, who is this? Talk to the demonstration guide whenever you want to leave town. Oh, okay, we're getting the, we're getting real tutorial here. This is the backstory I care about. Um, but anyway, now they can fit as much backstory in as they want. I feel like they sometimes kind of go overboard with it. I don't know. Uh, when I'm playing a game, I want to play it. I don't want to sit there and watch a movie. Uh, I don't know how she does it, but she can take you anywhere you want to go. Okay, good to know. Uh, I'm going to check out that woman with the heart, though. She might love me or be able to heal me. There are lots of dangerous monsters out there. I didn't want you two to get lonely, so I hired some people to go with you. Okay. Fighters are skilled at close combat. They have well-balanced offensive and defensive, or, or offense and defense. They'll be your main attackers early on. All right. They're the Zerglings. They're the cannon fodder. Red Skulls are boy magicians. Red means that they use fire-type magic. Long-range missile attacks really well. Okay. Healers are important for rejuvenation. They aren't skilled in close combat, so use a bow and do long-range attacks. Gotcha. You hired all these people? Oh, sweet. Uh, always save before going on an adventure. Press the triangle button. Gotcha. Imagine your parent named you uh, open square bracket fighter close square bracket, like that was your name. That would suck. He's basically defining your career right from the start. Oh, my mom is a summoner. Whoa, who is this? Can she join? like the looks of her. Uh, she's a, f a feline. A feline, right? Get it? Um, uh, why don't you become a demon? Why don't you become a demon? Let's all be demons together. Whatever you say, baby. I'm not going to become a demon. Uh, live a little. You might like it. Okay, she does not want to join me, it seems. What is this guy? Can we rotate the camera, by the way? We can! Okay, good. This guy is Pigolo, a ghost. All right, who's this? This is my sister, my brother. It's nice that when you walk up to people, you get to see their stats. It's actually super convenient. In some RPGs, you actually have to talk to people, but this makes it really quick if you just want to, like, see who people are. Okay, the dimensional guide. Uh, the dark secretary. Who's this? The post officer. I don't think I have any mail yet. Nobody even has my email address. The weapon shop. Ooh, we are going to see these guys a little bit. Okay, I, I don't want to. Let's see what kind of weapons uh, we're still preparing. Oh, okay. We're still preparing. We're still preparing. Okay, so the game's basically probably starting us off. Oh, God. There's a zombie in town. Do you guys know that there's a zombie living in town? He seems to have purchased property. Zombies are allowed to own property in our, in our part of the world? Interesting. The Demon Society is a contract society. Everything from... Uh, using magic to summoning members is all based on a contract. Thanks to them, my freedom was stolen. Contracts are such a nuisance. I hear you, man. It's like how you have to click accept on any, like, iTunes, you know, terms of service. Even though you don't actually agree, but you can't use the program unless you click accept. It's such a nuisance. It's kind of it's kind of bullshit, actually. Um, weird printy. Um, I'm going to keep my sister away from you, because when I saw you last in the opening intro, I think she straight up threw... A survival knife into your face. Where's Overlord Xenon, dude? If you're out there, if you're out there, shouldn't that be you are like apostrophe? Oh god, we got typos. It's a common typo though. Um, come on out, dude. Maybe just the penguin doesn't know. Like he's he was never trained in grammar. That penguin was trained in combat, but not grammar. What else we got? We got this guy over here. I don't even know how to get to this guy. Can you jump? Oh, you can jump. Bing, boom, a wood golem. Interesting. Okay, we're not going to talk to all these guys because I feel like we're just going to get lost. 
Hey, look, a petite orc. Interesting. Uh, to see Adele with a girl, how rare. Sh shut up. It's not like I want to be with her. Okay, so he's just scared of girls. This, this man is 25 years old, and he gets embarrassed when people say he likes a girl. Like we can dance with her. Um, she just wants us to be a demon, though. Okay, stop talking to her. <laughs> All right. What is this guy? This is a Mario, Mario boy. Yo, Mario boy, you want to play some SMB3, dog? I'm pretty good. Once you're a demon, it's not that bad. Ditching work won't even get you in trouble. Hmm, the life of a demon, eh? Well, I don't know what to say to that. This woman has become part tree. Otherwise, she looks to be... Wait, is it a woman or a man? Kind of looks like a woman. But again, I can't fully tell. Like, look, my dude... Look, doesn't it kind of look like he has breasts? I think it's just the way his ties hang, but it uh, doesn't look super man manly. And, like, from the back, it kind of looks like a girl. You know? Like, I don't know. Just me? Maybe it's just me. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, let's see what else is out there, guys. Hmm, so this is what the outside world is like. Oh, I guess I don't have to read it, because they're just going to say it. What the hell are you talking about? Where are you from? My mansion, of course. It is located somewhere in the land of Veldheim. Take what? me to your mansion. You don't know where it is? Well, that summon of yours is quite jarring. And truth be told, I have never been outside the mansion before. Okay, prediction, these two are going to fall in love and have demon babies. What? Are you serious? Seen this story a thousand times before. Man's mother is turned into demon. Man's mother uses entire family in sacrificial death pact to summon demon lord. Demon lo mother accidentally summons a demon lord's daughter. Son falls in love with said demon lord's daughter. Becomes demon lord and the whole thing starts all over again. Hail as old as time, my friends. What? Why would you do such a Okay. What did you just say? Is this, are we yeah. still going on the story here, guys? <laughs> my father has slaughtered 1,000 overlords. How are you going to defeat him? With love. Again, the music does not really suit what's going on here. They're debating about whether he's going to use her as a hostage. Look at this facial animation. Um, no, and it's like this, no like, pleasant, for. like, this is the music you listen to while you're, like, playing a farm what? simulator or something. Hey, hey, you're, like, harvesting closer. your radishes. It's like I harvest like moon music, basically. Okay, look, I will keep my promise. And still it's still going. It there, so This I debate about whether he's he's using her as a hostage or not is, like, they're really, they're really debating the fine points. They're getting into it. They don't want to leave any doubt in the player's mind. All right. Oh, good. We get to play the first dungeon, the ancient dungeon known as Tutorial One, and it is guarded by monsters. Monsters. They're like cute penguins. The penguins. Oh my God. Have uh, whatever you you call those things. Oh my God. What are the names of those things? I'm totally blanking. You know, like the dorky pouches we all wore in the '90s. Fanny packs. The penguins have fanny packs. Huh, you fool take you to my father do you think i would blindly obey you hmm i don't know but i think a penguin might stab you in the All back if you're not paying attention with death these lowly monsters shall feast on you uh oh she's turning against us guys then Ex I shall finally be free of these except they looks like they might jam a bomb on top of her <laughs> all right so i guess she learned a valuable lesson today never trust a penguin Okay, we get to fight what these dudes now. You what? They're... they're <laughs> it's a choreographed dance routine. What is happening in this game? This is not like Tactics Ogre at all, by the way. Wow. What is happening? <laughs> what are these, like, surfer penguins? They're like ballerina, fanny pack wearing... Surfer penguins armed with bombs. Hey, A for originality, right? You gotta give it to them. Pfft. Let's kick their ass, I guess. Let's do it. Excellent plan. What kind of problem? Man, we're into combat, and they're still like heavy into the conversation. You're joking, right? Oh, come on. Do not joke with peasant. Uh. 
loading. Oh my god, it's like one load screen after the other. Let's do this. Would you like to view this tutorial? Sure or hell no. Forget it, let's just go in. I, I've seen enough things described to me. I just want to like, I just want to get my hands dirty, man. Like, let's do this. I'm an old school gamer. You know, back in the day, you brought a Nintendo game home from the store that you rented. You did not, there was no instructions to even read most of the time. You basically just picked up a controller and hoped for the best. So I played Tactic to Ogre before. I know what's going on. And now we're going to go like this. No, and we'll go like this. And attack. Attack him. Attack. Okay, he is attacking. All right, let's get our other characters out here. So they're all beaming in out of this, like, weird pellet thing. This weird, like, summoning portal. Uh, display range move. That's how far it can move. I guess just defend. Okay. Bring all our characters out here. This is this guy looks way more suited for combat than my guy. But uh, I guess we'll just defend. Let's bring these. Bring them all out. I forget who this girl is. She's oh the red skull. It's a boy actually, and he he has the power of fire within him. He learned at a young age that he he felt fire on the inside. Now don't attack our friendly character there. Let's go ahead and defend. We got one more character. It's Erica. Erica the healer. She go over here, and she will also attack. She will attack this guy. All right. Now, how do we end the turn? Execute. Oh, that's cool. It's fun little like anime. Oh, what? What the heck? Wow, the animations are pretty cool. Two attacks. Total damage, 15. That's cool. They, the, the style of this game is pretty cool. I do love how when you hover over guys, you see all their stats. It's like a really well done interface here. Um, so let's end our turn. Enemy turn. Oh no, penguins. My greatest weakness, Pengu. No, Pengu. Oh, Pengu. Oh, he just, oh. He countered them in the face with punches. That's how that works. Okay, this guy is gonna go stuff a Pengu with a sword in the side of its greasy little head. All right, Pengu dude. Let's go ahead and execute that. Boom. That's cool how you can like execute one character at a time so you can like see, you know, do you want other characters to attack this one enemy or what? So sort of like a it's a turn-based kind of uh, real-time in the sense that, like, all your characters could execute their, their turns at once. I guess it is technically turn-based. But, oh, we punched him in the back of the head. I love that move. Um, okay. I'm just going to have her attack this guy. I'm going to move her like this. Have her attack. No, wait. Have her move like this. And attack. Hagar. Oh, that's the name of the penguin? The penguins have names? Alright. This guy will attack. He will move here. And he will attack. Penguin. I, I can't get over the music, though. It definitely feels like... Uh... Oh, she just shot him in the face! Oh! Oh, God. The music definitely feels like a far more jovial experience than, like, what is actually happening. We killed a, a, a gang of murderous penguins. And we got hustle gloves and brawny muscles. Or wait, did we get that, or those are just potential bonuses? I want hustle gloves, man. Help you hustle. Are you sure you want to skip the story? I... Guess what? I do! Oh, you have no idea! Wait, can we... Are you sure you want to skip the story? Yes. Oh, so badly. Oh, yes! Oh, okay! We are now officially 25 or so minutes into this game. We have figured out how to actually play without having to watch all the story. So I'm just... Here's, here's my... Here's what we're going to do. We're going to invent the story as we go along. But my working assumption is that if there are penguins trying to kill us, there's they did something to bother us or something and I don't know that's about all the story I really need I feel like I'll be personally satisfied with that degree of story but uh, penguins bad us good 
J mad. You know, that's like the I, I have like a very caveman mentality about playing these games sometimes. I wanna actually play the game, man. Can we attack anyone? No. It is weird that they give you the option to attack your like allies. Like I definitely don't want to attack. Wait, what is what does lift do? Let's lift Erica. Whoa! Yeah, we did. All right. And throw her? Huh. Let's throw her at the penguin. Interesting. Interesting. That is probably a really bad place for her to be because she is a ranged unit. And I do not want her to be there. Wait, can we un undo this? Can we undo this? No, we can't. We, we totally muffed that up. Okay. So Yuri's going to be dispatched. So pro tip, when you throw your allies at a penguin, sometimes you can't take it back. There's some things in life you can't take back, like throwing throwing someone you love at a penguin. It's, uh, it's a kind of move that gets locked in. Oh, he sliced her! Fucking penguins, man. All right, let's let's show this penguin what it means to to cause trouble in my town. We're gonna stab him in the back of his freaking penguin head. Attack. Enkidu! Enkidu, the, the treacherous pingu. Alright, down you go, buddy. And... Okay, you're gonna go like this. And you're gonna attack Eric, the treacherous pingu. Or Bune, whatever his name is. I, I imagine that by, by uh, process of elimination, the last penguin's name must be Debbie. So, we're gonna go like this, I think. What are we gonna do? We're gonna go over here. Attack. Oh, we have we have the lion's pick. Oh, Adele's the last pingu. Yeah, we'll attack him. And this guy has the power of fire. Let's try and keep this penguin over here busy. I think. Let's do this. Attack. No, don't attack a friendly. No, okay, fine. Wait, wait, special fire. Yes, use fire on this dude. Oh, look, we can get we can get uh, the stats. Private Prinny. I think that's like his class. A penguin-like monster from the netherworld explodes when thrown? Interesting. Maybe we should try and throw some of these guys. Can we lift? Oh, dude. <laughs> we picked him up. We totally picked him up. We're going to freaking throw this dude. Oh, here we go. Boom. Oh, you can just pick these little guys up. Oh, man, I didn't know that. All right, let's let's uh, let's see what happens. Whoa, slice him in the back, punch him in the face, shoot him in the face! Oh, you know what? We blew up that one guy. We didn't get to see our guy who does fire. So we should we should totally try and see that. Ready, dude! You sound like just kids. Little baby penguins that were just out for a day. Out for a little adventure. Okay, we're going to use our fire attack on this pengu here. See what happens. I keep calling them pengus. It just feels right. Like I'm in an anime game, Pengu feels like the right word to be using. We burned him. Let's just uh, finish this guy off pretty quickly here. Execute. Level up. Should we throw this guy? No, let's totally attack him. Execute. Yeah. A glorious victory against the demonish penguins. Look, we're literally having a tea party on their carcasses. What a crazy game! It does have awesome style, though. I I know I've sort of you know been been ragging on it for its excessive story, at least excessive like to to the degree that I find story excessive. But like the the gameplay is solid. Like it really feels like a continuation of sort of the concepts that we originally saw back in Tactics Ogre. I'm sure many games have come you know between now and Tactics Ogre, and I'm sure that this you know isn't the only. Um, or Tactics Ogre wasn't even the, the first game to do this. Um, but nonetheless, um, it still feels like it's just done really well. Boom! Oh, jeez. I guess we only need one guy to kill, like, five penguins. Now that I realize, you can just pick them up. Like, let's just have these two. Forget about bringing everyone else out. What's the point? Okay. Move. Over here. Can we beam the red zone? There's like a blue zone and a red zone. I don't know what the difference is. Let's find out. We won't even bring anyone else out. It's unnecessary. Although there is... What is this? Blue to enemy boost. 
blue to experience. I don't know what that... Oh, there's more experience in this part of the world, maybe? For some reason? Let's go ahead and... Oh, you just... Okay. Uh, what are we going to do? Pick this guy up. And we're going to throw him. <laughs> this is how you fight your opponents. This is like the Hulk Hogan style of fighting your opponents. You don't punch them or kill them with swords. You just, like, literally pick them up and do body slams. An unopened soda. Ah, the heroes of yore. Bring back untold treasures like a can of Dr. Pepper and an old slipper and a penguin's fanny pack. All right. So enemy boost 50%. Red panel none. Okay, so there's different, like, boosting things. Interesting. The null. Interesting. I wonder, I guess we can destroy those probably. Let's see, let's bring out, uh, where's our fighter guy? Yuri, Yuri the fighter. Yuri's gonna go smash these crystal crap things. He ain't got time for that crap. Meanwhile, we're gonna go body slam this guy, Macho Man Randy Savage style. Lift him up. Macho Man Randy Savage is a badass name. Nobody's gonna mess with you if that's your name. Oh, let's throw him off the cliff. Oh, we can't. Oh, just throw him oh that hurt me. Oh, that hurt me bad. Okay, wait, who's the healer? We totally have a healer. She's gonna be over here, and she's gonna do whatever she needs to do to heal me up, if you know what I mean. It's usually, it's called, it's called casting a spell, guys. Get your mind out of the gutter. We got Rosalind over here. I guess we'll bring her out. I guess she can fight. Wait, yellow to enemy boost. Can we attack these things? Go ahead and do that. Feels right. And we'll go over here. And we will use a fire spell. Oh, they're out of range, aren't they? Okay, well, whatever. Uh, we'll just defend. And we will execute. Oh, sh damn. Oh, damn. Oh. Oh, what's happening? Oh. Interesting. Huh. Blue to silence. Hmm. Okay, this guy needs to get out of there. Oh, wait. Just end our whole turn. No penguins! They're like the cutest things ever, but they get near you and they literally pull out like giant knives. It's actually kind of terrifying. Okay, I'm gonna move this guy over here and defend. Oh, no, wait. Move him over here. Okay, I'm gonna do this. Move this guy over here. And so I, I say this is not like a total, just tactical game because um, there's this sort of element of you can like be, be switching back and forth between guys. Like, so I started moving this guy. I'm gonna have him cast a spell, but I'm first gonna have this guy attack this thing and see what it does. So it's like, it is turn-based, but it's like you can mix up all the different turns of your characters, and you can execute a few sequences at a time and stuff. So, um, like, we'll execute his attack right now. And that did nothing. Okay, so now this guy can cast his spell. But, like, I didn't want to cast a spell till after that broke, um, but I wanted to get him out of the way in case when that broke, it damaged stuff over here. So, so it is turn-based, but it's kind of turn-based in a very modern way, where it's, like, quite flexible, actually. It's kind of interesting. Um, let's go ahead and we'll also attack this guy right in the face. This guy's gonna go over here. He's full health, right? Yep, he is. She's gonna go over here. She'll attack. No, she can't attack anyone of importance. Okay, just defend. And end my turn. Oh, we toasted him up. Oh wait, characters have been leveling up. Do I need to do anything? Oh! He's very low on health. Look at his health bar. He's like, it's like a sliver of life left. That's okay, we got a healer right here. She's gonna totally go and heal this guy. I think when she heals, if I'm not mistaken, hold on, she heals, she gets experience. Yeah, she does, I think. Hmm. There's usually a lot of statistics in these Japanese tactical games, so I don't fully follow all of them, but uh, I like what I see, basically. Yeah! Hopefully she gets experience from that. 
because that's cool if you get experience more than just killing things. I said this before and I'll say it again, RPGs that only allow you to collect experience through killing stuff is pretty funny because usually like it's like you go out and kill like a hundred rad scorpions and you come back and for some reason you're like a better lockpick or like a better doctor and it's like how does that work um yeah skip the story like if in real life you know you just wanted to like develop your skills so you went out and like got in a bunch of bar fights and you came home and like oh i'm good at math suddenly <laughs> um all right beginner's field or reflection pond i think beginner's field is where we were so let's go ahead to Reflection Pond and skip the story. Hold the story there, sir. It's like hold the lettuce. We don't need it. We're on a diet, a story diet. It's called All We Want to Do is Kill Penguins. It's actually a badass name for a band. Somebody should totally name their band that. Just Want to Kill Penguins. Let's do this. Wait, why can't? There we go. Boom! Boom! Okay, that uh, cle cleared the whole stage. Man, it turns out penguins are like damn easy. All right, so we beat the reflection pond. Time to go into Psycho's hideout, which just like sounds nefarious, but let's go ahead and do it. I want to kill a psycho. I hope it's a psycho pengu. I'm gonna beat the crap out of him. Beat, beat the living snot out of him. Oh, look at this. Mothman's. What are these? Orcs? Oh god, okay, the stakes have gotten big. There's like actual real villains. Oh what, you can go on top of the tree? Whoa, okay. I'm gonna throw someone up there. A petite orc. All right, let's do it. What is this? To experience plus 50 blue panel none. Well, let's, let's just see what happens. Over here, attack this. Okay, now let's bring out our fighter dude. So this game totally does remind me of Tactics Ogre now that I'm actually playing it. I mean, I knew the gameplay was going to be somewhat like Tactics Ogre, but like actually playing it, I'm like, yeah, it's it's like just like Tactics Ogre. Um, although, as I say, it's sort of, you know, a little, uh, a little more refined, I think. Not that that game like wasn't good. It's just this one, the controls feel like a little, um, a little more refined. Um, there's no other way to say it. Um, and, and it's weird that, like, back when I was playing Pools of Radiance, that was a D&D &D RPG. Um, and all the combat was totally like this, by the way. Um, but rather than clicking from a menu where you want to go in terms of combat, you would, like, explore a dungeon. Sort of first-person perspective. So you get to, like, explore a dungeon and different caves and stuff and even encounter monsters. But it's weird that, like, I never, ever made the connection that... Tactics Ogre and like this and Pools of Radiance are all kind of like the same in terms of combat style. Um, I think we can just go ahead and execute our turn here. Um, Pools of Radiance is one of those games actually, by the way, that like I really liked it as a kid, but when I went to go and like replay it, oh, they're stealing a, a treasure chest. Oh God. He yelled in my ear really loud. What a dick. He was like, hey, how are you? As loud as he could. Okay, we're gonna kill this guy, Jargon. That's the last thing you'll ever say. Um, but yeah, I remember when I was a kid playing uh, Pools of Radiance, and I really enjoyed it. But when I went back to play it for my channel, I feel like I forgot how... Um, not like complicated it was but like involved and so I think I sat down one afternoon to like play it in an afternoon but I think really I need to uh, like play it a little bit off camera get accustomed to it again and then come back to it um, I definitely wanted to do that because I, I I don't know my, my, my playthrough of it I always kind of feel like I just I didn't capture all the like fun aspects that I remember as a kid and I feel like maybe I undersold the game a little bit so um, I have like a huge ongoing list by the way of games that I want to someday go back and play again. Um, oh man, we are dominating this thing, whatever it was. We killed him off, guys! Teamwork! We leveled up. Okay, hold on. I gotta check to see if I'm supposed to be doing anything when I level up here. God, there's a lot of orcs. We need to use this natural choke point and prevent them from swarming us. But does she need to do anything? I think it's all pretty automatic. In some RPGs, you get to like divvy out points and stuff. I, I I feel like in some Japanese RPGs, it's more common for the statistics to all just kind of grow naturally. You don't really have to do all that much. His mint gun, gum and unopened soda. Wait, what does everyone else have? Uh, what does this guy have? Mint gum and unopened. Oh, that's just like 
common. It's like we're all sharing that mint gum and unopened soda. We went into combat with gum and soda. What are we, like, eight years old? This is like, it's like, this is what children go into combat with, man. Well, actually, I guess children don't really go into combat all that much. And if they do, they're probably packing, like, AK-47s, and it's some kind of, like, horrible, uh, like, African warlord who's forcing them into combat. And this got really dark. Uh, I, I, I apologize. I don't want to be talking about children going to war. That's, that's terrible. This is just a jovial bunch of friends having fun, killing a few orcs together. There's nothing nefarious about this, guys. Um, okay, go over here, I guess. I, I think this is actually a choke point. I think this is a cliff we can't cross. All right, let's just see what happens when we end our turn. Um, but yeah, I uh, definitely want to play Pools of Radiance again at some point. And I think give it like a, a, a better overview when I play it uh, for you guys. And like, I have a few other games like that. Like I want to do that for the Art of War as well. That was another game that like I loved as a kid, but I feel like when I went to replay it uh, for my series here, I forgot. I thought I would remember it better than I actually did, and um, oh, what the hell, we did like a combo attack on him. Um, I think I could have had more fun with that game, so I do kind of want to go back and replay that at some point. Um, what else do I want to replay? Uh, Mario Golf. So I played Mario Golf on the Game Boy Advance, but there's a totally different version of it on the N64. And like honestly, if I was playing that for my series these days, I probably would have played both versions. But, I don't know, back when I did it, I just sort of felt like playing the one, and I didn't play the N64 version, but I definitely should have, so I want to do that. I don't know, there's lots, of, there's lots of games that I want to go back and play one day, but anyway, we're playing PlayStation 2 here. Why are we talking about N64? That's like, that's like sacrilege. Why are we bringing up, you know, Sony's rival here? We, we need to be focusing on this game. We need to focus on the orcs that uh, are defying us, that we need to slaughter to send, in, send a message to the other orcs. These guys broke that uh, treasure chest, so they probably got something good, so we're totally gonna try and smash their faces in and take it. Cause that's the hero way, man. It sounds like you're just a mugger from the outset, but really you're a hero. I mean, to be totally fair, the line between hero and straight up criminal is usually pretty thin. Um, and it kinda depends on, uh, kinda depends on where you're standing. I mean, my mother's a demon. We did, you know, truth be told, we tried to human sacrifice some people earlier in the story. But that's all behind us now. Now we're the good guys. Um, or maybe it's not behind us and we're still the good guys. Look, it doesn't matter. What I'm trying to tell you guys here is that truth is in the eye of the beholder. Just do what you want to do and don't worry about the rest. Move. Let's go over here. And then we're going to shoot him. Oh, I only have one option. Okay, just shoot him. Do it. Boom. Speed down. Or spadenone. Because I don't have any vowels. Right, let's attack. Wait. Move. Here. Okay. So I guess you have to be on like the same level as someone to attack them. Uh, this is weird. Alright. Like, can this guy do this? Can he cast fire on someone? Yes, he... No! What, what do you mean, no? Okay, forget it. Let's just end our turn. Oh, wait. I know. He can... Nope. I'm gonna lift up the other guy and, like, throw him over. That's what we can do. This is how we use our turn effectively. Throw him. Not into the pit. Oh, there there it goes. There's, our, there's the way out. Right over there. Boom! Huh, you can, like, throw each other across a cliff. All right, let's end our turn. These orcs are just asking for it, man. Oh, that was not a good place to throw him, as it turns out. Because now he is getting punked from both sides. But he has good counters. He has good instincts, this kid. All right. Um, wait, do I have any specials? Triple strike. Unfortunately... Victim is crippled by three lethal, lethal blows. Unfortunately, I'm too crippled to use a critical strike there. Let's just see what happens. Hopefully he lives. Oh, I think he evaporated into a puff of smoke. I don't know the consequences of that, um, but let's just presume that everything's gonna be okay. But uh, our illustrious hero seems to have completely vanished. We'll just show up later in town and they'll be like, you have saved our village. 
Where's Adele? Like, the thing about Adele, you gotta understand, is he's dead. He's, he, yeah, he's straight up. There's no easy way to say it. He, he didn't make it. Why can't I attack this one guy? The, the line of sight in this is kind of weird. Okay, it doesn't really matter, though. Uh, special fire on this dude here. And she is also going to attack... Mon what's his name? Montutu? Monatu. The evil Monatu. These guys are like the um, Moblins in Legend of Zelda. They're sort of like the orcs. These guys here, they kind of look like Moblins. If you look at his picture in the bottom left there. Uh, Moblins are always so cool. It's funny how like Nintendo would come up with their own names for like everything. Like they weren't goblins. They weren't orcs. They were Moblins. You know, Hearthstone does that too, I've noticed. Like, Blizzard is really into that. Like, it's not Dispel, it's Silence. It's not um, Shield or Block, it's Taunt. Like, they have their own, like, inventive names for things. I kind of like that, actually. It creates, like, a unique vocabulary. Alright, this guy's almost dead, and so is the other guy. We're going mano a mano, dude. Me and you, Gimlet. Let's see what you're made of. You're made of crap, as it turns out. Okay, we did lose somebody. He's eternally dead, but it's all good. I wonder how you use the bonus list. Because I want some. I want the Iron Axe, man. Are you sure you want to skip the story? Yes. You know what? We should check in back in with the story and see what the hell's going on. Um, let's, for a second here, exit the areas. And let's go and, like, heal our dudes up. Okay, so we have just finished vanquishing penguins and orcs. Time to heal ourselves up. So, the Dark Hospital. Sounds like a good place to go. Welcome to the Netherworld Hospital. Netherworld is such a cool name for, like, the afterlife or, like, the demon zone or something. Like, Beetlejuice was in the Netherworld, I think. Uh, we, this hospital, will cover all damage you've been dealt with. Uh, at the time, depending on how much HP, blah, 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 blah. It's like Charlie Brown. Wah, 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 wah. Heal all. Boom. We're healed. It costs us 135 somethings. I don't even understand the currency of this game. Um, but sure. Um, we, we spent it. I didn't even know there was currency, to be t completely honest with you. I thought we were on the barter system here. But uh, I guess not. Post officer. Let's see what's going on with the dark secretary. Would you like to use the dark assembly? What is the dark assembly? Uh, which explanation? Oh, God. What is the Dark Assembly? Uh, in the Assembly, you can suggest builds, such as creating new characters. It is a simple build, but you will not need the approval of the Assembly, but important builds require approval. If you make good use of the Dark Assembly, you'll be able to have more advantages later on. Oh, well, that's interesting. Huh. Can we enter the Assembly? Who will address the Assembly? Interesting. Okay, let's let the main character do it. Let's try and create a new character. Oh, cool. Oh, you can create, like, penguins and orcs. Very interesting. Look at this. Look at this. Huh, a thief. Interesting. Let's try and create a thief. Good for nothing. Uh, incompetent, average, skilled, distinguished, or genius. How about a good for nothing thief? It seems to be all we're capable of doing. Um, okay. Also, this character does not look like a thief. She looks more like kind of like an explorer. Like, she's got her hand above. She's, like, looking off into the horizon. Okay, this is a good-for-nothing thief, so we need, like, a good, good-for-nothing name. How about, like, Chad? Ugh, freaking Chads, man. Chads are good for nothing, I'll tell ya. If you're, I, I sincerely hope no one out there is named Chad. That's, you know, my condolences. Um, but Chad is a good-for-nothing thief. Oh, and we, we don't have bonus points. We have to take five away. Well, Chad's are really dumb, so we'll just lower the intelligence. I, I'm just joking, guys. If you're named Chad, I, I don't have anything against you, but... Uh, would you steal a heart in a second? High steal chance with hands. Wait, high steal chance with hands? I like the way that sounds. It's as if, like, you just put your hands on a desk and your hands do the rest. It's like, ooh, there's a chance that they're just going to steal something. Just like the hands just absorb it, like, magnetically. Um, the reason I hate Chad's is because in grade 8, Chad has been created. You dick. 
is because in grade like seven and eight, um, me and a friend in like class were just joking that like uh, about some imaginary classmate we had named Chad and him being a dumbass, and that's that's literally like it's it's you had to be there really. It's it's more funny than it sounds, but that's the only reason. Um, can we buy weapons or anything? Um, when you equip weapons, I suggest you equip a weapon that the character is good with. Character is good with swords. Should use swords. Oh man, like. <laughs> Does that, does that really need to be said? Like, who's there? Like, hmm. It says this character's good with swords, but I'm thinking he's more of an axe man. Like, legitimately. Um, okay, they're like talking, talking, talking. We're gonna buy a lazy sword. We should buy the lazy sword for the thief. The rapier. The rapier. The replica spear. The replica spear. What is it? Just like foam, not a real spear. Pikes, toy bows, a BB gun, or a hand. Well, that's like that. That's like the difference between using something that's just gonna like be like annoying versus literally murder someone. A BB gun or a handgun is a huge difference in combat. Wood staff, bone staff, paw glove, the goblin claw. I think that's a sexual maneuver from medieval England. Um, or the dead. Let's buy that lazy sword. I kind of want to give it to the thief. Just for fun. Yes. I don't even know what it costs. Are there prices? HL. What? What is HL? Don't even know. Um, now, how do we equip Chad with the lazy sword? Oh, we do have an iron axe. It's okay. He's going to get the lazy sword. Boom. Um, we should equip some other stuff here, too, while we're at it. Equip. Let's go with Adele. Let's give him the iron axe. He paid the iron price for that. He can wear the common orb. Sure. I don't know. Does, is that good? Probably not. Um, obviously, you can like look up statistics and stuff and try and like better balance your characters. But um, all right, cool. Let's let's go back into combat one more time. And I tell you what, we'll give this damn story one more shot. We're not going to skip the story this time around. Because um, I feel like we're getting to the point where we do have to wrap this up. And I've been trying to experience as much of the game as I can. Um, let's just see what's been happening in this story. See if we can piece together the pieces. Because we've been out of it for a while. We've literally not been paying attention to any bit of story. So let's just see what it, what's going on. A blonde kid walks majestically through the forest. The frontiers of Veldine in search of a vicious hero who was spotted in the area. Wait, what's this? I can't believe it! Oh, you better believe it, buddy. It's Macho Man Randy Adele. And he's here to kick ass and chew bubble gum. And he's all out of gum. Yeah! Did you see that? Is he just doing acrobatics in the field to try and intimidate me? Cut. What is happening? Oh, they're filming a movie. What a zany game. Like, I can't even tell what what time in history it's supposed to take place in. This game is full of anachronisms. It's like the Steven Spielberg. Now I do kind of wish we'd skip the story, to be honest. So, I don't know what's going on in this game, guys. You know the irony, I think, for me of playing a game like this is, like, I have definitely complained in the past when I play an RPG where I kind of feel like with video game RPGs, the emphasis is all on combat. Um, and they kind of miss all the other things about RPGs that make them cool, like uh, story and using skills, like being able to talk your way out of problems or steal your way out of problems, things like that. But uh, I honestly kind of feel like at some level playing RPGs that are pretty much heavy on the combat like this game, I mean this game, the gameplay is almost pure combat. But it's sort of like it's more familiar to me. Like, it's weird. Like, back when I played Ultima Online, admittedly, I thought I was thinking of that game as basically like Diablo, where it was just going to be majority combat. But it really wasn't. It was almost more like Minecraft or The Sims. And people told me afterwards, you know, after I put on my videos, I was like, I just don't get this game. People were like, well, it's not supposed to be pure combat. Um, and it's ironic because I often lament games like this that are RPGs, but they're only combat, that I wish they had more, like, you know, dialogues that mattered, choices that mattered, being able to sneak your way through problems, steal your way through problems, talk your way past people, stuff like that. So, 
Not it's kind of ironic that for Ultima Online, I, I think it had a lot of that, and I just didn't even know to look for it, because so I didn't even think that game did have it, so I don't know. Maybe it could have been presented in a way that made it more obvious, or maybe it was just me. But uh, it, I feel like the RPG genre, like as we're waiting, like we're still waiting on this cutscene, by the way, I've kind of stopped paying attention, but um, the RPG genre for video games has like a huge variety of types of games. Like, have you guys ever thought of this? Like... I do, by the way, totally like tactical games. Like, I love... I one of my favorite games of all time is arguably a tactical game, the Battletech Crescent Hawks Revenge. Um, and I did like Tactics Ogre. I like the combat in this game. I could see getting into it. Um, but uh, I also like a lot of the other parts of RPGs that aren't being included here. Um, like, I like in Fallout how you can talk your way out of problems, and there's lots of different ways to solve things. Or in Deus Ex, you can do that, too. Um, and then there's sort of like the Final Fantasy style games that are kind of like this, but they don't have the tactical elements of the combat where you can move around, but they still have a lot of strategy that you can use. I don't know. It's, it kind of feels like RPG. There's just so much. Oh, check out this battle axe, by the way. Is that not awesome? It kind of feels like for RPGs, there's just so many, so much variety of types of RPGs. Jordan. We're just killing a guy named Jordan. Um, that you could almost have favorite sub-genres of... RPGs. And, you know what, hey, that's actually totally true. I, I never thought of this before. What are your guys' favorite sub-genres of video game RPGs? Um, like, for me, I guess it would sort of harken back to what I think my favorite RPGs have been over the years, so things like Fallout, Deus Ex, where combat is one way to solve problems, but there's also many other ways. And where, like, cutscenes and dialogue aren't necessarily just you watching a lot of pre-rendered story but they also include choices that you can make that actually have consequences. Um, so kind of like a, where RPGs meet adventure games uh, and sort of open world choices. I think that's my favorite kind of RPG. I would say a tactical game like this is not necessarily my favorite, um, but as I said, um, I do like tactical stuff and I do enjoy this kind of combat. It's fun to sort of position your characters and uh, you know, look at the statistics and, like, sort of work your way over... I mean, this feels more like fighting a war, almost, where you have to, like, position your troops and, like, flank people and kind of get them into, like, uh, pincer attacks and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's just sort of different strokes, but um, I feel like this tactical-style gameplay you can get in other games, but I feel like the type of gameplay that I really, really, really personally love in RPGs... Um, in the RPGs I like, you only really seem to get it there. You get it a little bit, I think, with some of the Telltale Adventure games where there's a lot of choices and options and you can fight or sneak your way past things, but it's not quite the same as like a real RPG where you have characters whose stats are building up as you go and stuff like that. So anyway, I don't know. Those are just my thoughts. I I'm curious to hear from you guys, though. Like, uh, Do you feel like computer video game RPGs have as much variety as I'm making it out to be? And if so, what, what are your favorite sort of aspects of uh, your favorite RPGs? Do you like them all equally? Do you like these tactical style ones? Do you like ones that sort of give you more story, dialogue options, choices? You know, is it Fallout? Is it Mass Effect? Um, you know, what is it? What is it about an RPG? And, and what, specifically, what's your favorite kind of RPG? I'm really curious to hear. I feel like that'd be fun to sort of discuss with you guys. Um, but it, see, I feel like we went from totally slaughtering penguins to like getting our ass handed to us for lack of a better way to say it we we're totally getting dominated here we were not ready we need to go back and grind on the penguins um that's that came out incorrectly but you know what i mean um we're gonna lose this battle um but that's okay because we were kind of reaching uh we're kind of reaching a point where we had to kind of move on anyway but uh this gay two here this is one of the games of the book 1001 video games you must play before you die and as far as tactical RPGs go, I definitely feel like this is one of the smoother ones that I have played. And so I think if you're looking for tactical RPG, um, I feel like this one, gameplay-wise, at, at the bare minimum, um, seems to have some pretty easy gameplay to pick up. There seems to be depth here for you, so it seems like the kind of thing that you could definitely enjoy. So. Um, I think it is something that might be worth playing. By the way, we haven't even used the thief. I I've totally lost track of her. I think she's dead. Lady fighter. Ah, damn it. I did kind of want to use that thief, but she just blended into the enemies. I didn't even know I, I still had her. 
Um, but as far as, you know, like, if you're not into those types of games, you're going to want to play this. I haven't seen anything that I feel like would draw me in if I wasn't looking for a tactical RPG. Um, and I do, I do kind of feel Detective Foley. There's a detective in here. He's undercover! Um, I do kind of feel like the, the, the dialogue and stuff was a little excessive to the point where, like, it was kind of getting a little annoying. But, um, you know, I mean... That same dialogue that might be a little annoying to me because I just wanted to sort of get into the gameplay, that might be the, the drawing point in for a lot of people because I, I do believe this game's supposed to have a pretty decent story at the very least. So um, if you want to take some time with the story, I bet there's probably more here than uh, we sort of explored today. But uh, hey, that's the joy of this little journey here. If you spot a game that you think looks interesting, go try it out yourself. You know, we're not going to finish all the games ourselves. And hey, guess what? Playing games is kind of fun. It may shock you to find out that I hold that opinion, but playing games is kind of fun, so you guys can feel free to do it too. You don't just have to watch me. But anyway, guys, those are my thoughts on this Gay 2 here. What do you guys think? Is this a game that you played before? Do you have fond memories of this one? Do you think it looks like a fun game to play, even if you haven't played it before? Oh, God. That guy uh, was not messing around. He just straight up ended us. I... I lost? <laughs> How's it feel? Man, this guy, like, needs to do his shirt up. That is, like, um, it's not appealing. I don't know what he thinks he's pulling off, but he has the, the hairless chest of an eight-year-old and nothing else going for him. So the people in this world do dress bizarrely. I will I will go on the record, and I stand by that opinion. But anyway, guys, it's been fun checking this game out with you. Hopefully you agree. If you've had fun today, go ahead, slam that like button, slap subscribe, and remember to share this video with all your friends and fam. I will be back soon with a new video and new game, so don't forget to tune back in. But uh, until then, guys, stay out of the netherworld, because it's just full of ravenous, crazy penguins and movie stars. And you guys take care of yourselves. Peace. Oh, it, we, like, legitimately lost. Like, we're at the end credit. W what an end credit scene. Like, a close-up of the cro a crotch shot of some kind of celebrity within the game world. And we even got awesome music. Seriously, though, did, did we actually lose? I can't skip this. I think we, we legit lost the game. Oh, shit. Yep. We lost. Oh, but this is kind of cool. You can save your data for the next cycle. Huh. So maybe death is not the end. So, actually, that's a game mechanic that I've rarely seen in a game where you die, you save your game, and then maybe it will make your next playthrough a little different or a little better. Um, that's actually pretty cool. That's actually pretty cool. Oh, she just threw a knife in the face of a penguin! <laughs>